other discussions. Uh, we are joined by Johnson Gizaka, a political analyst. Uh, we now want to discuss the issues to do with the uh, political party disputes resolution mechanisms. And of course, coming from the, coming from the, uh, the rather chaotic party nominations, when Agivaka, you must agree, there's a lot of mending to do. There's a lot of uh, uh, pacifying to do. Uh, do you think that the parties finally agree they don't have the capacity to conduct party nominations, but do they have the capacity to pacify their members through this dispute, me dispute resolution mechanism, given what we've seen this past week? Thank you, friend. Um, I think what we, sh we should be expecting from the party dispute resolution efforts is, is essentially to ensure that uh, the fallouts uh, from the losers is not such that they damage the vote uh, of the various parties. Remember, our political parties uh, have some votes that kind of they've locked them in. Um, so, so really, if you ask me, uh, the fundamental issues will never be addressed. There will be a lot of backroom negotiations, uh, a lot of uh, promises, if you ask me, uh, so that the fellows who are complaining do not bolt out. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, um, uh, the, the areas that these parties have support are critical for their, for their survival, uh, for whatever they are planning to do post-election or even before the elections. So there is the effort you are seeing from the, res the, the effort to resolve the disputes are really an effort to contain the fallout. The fundamental issues, friend, is that there are complaints that they were rigged. Mm -hmm. um, it's unlikely that anybody who believes that they were rigged out of what they claim or what they believed were their rightful uh, victories are going to be satisfied. But there will be promises. Um, we know we've had the various party leaders uh, you know, tell their supporters that they, whatever government they are going to form is big enough so everybody will be contained within those uh, particular frameworks. Yes. Um, but in terms of addressing the actual issues, um, I doubt whether those issues can be resolved because the issues, friend, if you remember, are people are claiming that they are winners. Yes. Now, now, you know, when somebody has already a mindset that he won and he was never given the opportunity to be the flag bearer, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult for that particular person to be satisfied yes. with anything short of being given that opportunity. And because some of these hearings, and in fact not some, all of these hearings are being conducted in private. We are not private to what goes on in there. We do not know. What do you think happens? Is it that uh, you come present your petition and you say I have evidence, then you start presenting evidence, then there's a sort of court system where you present your case and the other one presents their case, then a judge determines? <laughs> Fred, you know, in, in the normal court process, it's an open court. You know, the parties who are in dispute, they come with their various versions, and all of us are able to listen to the merit and the merits. And, and even from a, you know, if you are not even part of those disputes, you can more or less know where the evidence is leading. In the case of parties, and the parties have actually said several times that they are private entities, that they, be, they should be left to do uh, their, their in-house issues uh, the best way they know how. But the parties forget that they are beneficiaries of our taxes. So as long as those parties benefit from our taxes, we will be demanding transparency, we will be demanding processes that are accountable. Now, uh, you asked me a very good question. Uh, why do, do, do they have an open, uh, a, a, an open process? Uh, for very, very good reason. You know, whatever is going on there, there's a lot of shenanigans, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, we don't know how the process is prosecuted. I know there are lawyers, good lawyers, who are handling this particular matter. But my guess is as good as yours, mm -hmm. that essentially there is no serious interrogation of the evidence, of the complaints. Um, so my guess is that that's why they, maybe they may not want us to do that. But I think as Kenyans we are demanding that parties must have a transparent way of resolving those issues mm -hmm. because those parties benefit from our taxes. Yes, and uh, do we see a level of stage management in terms of uh, the process? Because a case in point, um, it appears that like, uh, this uh, dispute uh, resolution mechanism or space or time for that matter has just uh, provided the parties with more time for board negotiations. Case in point, what happened in, Kamuku, in the case of Kamukunji constituency in as far as Jubilee party primaries are concerned, Simon Bugwa versus Yusuf Hassan. We do have that clip by Simon Bugwa yesterday withdrawing from that particular race. Let's, let's, let's have that clip.
politicians with the Jubilee Party leadership at the highest levels. I have today decided to stop any further litigation on this matter at the Jubilee Party Appeals, Appeals Tribunal or at the political parties tribunal. Yes, Bonagivaka, in, the, in that particular case, what do you read? Do you think it was uh, that uh, Simon Bugo really lost uh, in that uh, contest or it was simply a boardroom discussion and they decided now we need to give it to Yusuf Hassan? Well, that, that is what you call political pragmatism. The Somali community are huge stakeholders in the Jubilee administration and I think they are flagship um, leaders will be Yusuf and Duale. So invariably, uh, if Yusuf is not on the cards, I mean, you can imagine what that would mean. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, of course, Honamu Bogo is not telling us what happened, but you can rest assured <laughs> there were very many promises made to that gentleman yes. uh, that he steps down. But I think if you ask me, uh, every party, every organization must actually go out of the way to do things that, on the face of it, don't appear logical. Yes. And I think, we see what has happened to Honamu Bogua and Yusuf, that is actually a classic case of parties going out on the way and you are assuring that whatever outcome is delivered is to consolidate their position, not to weaken their position. And, uh, and Yusuf is very important for purposes of giving Jubilee uh, that phase that in fact yes. uh, they have presence that the Somali community, they are an integral part. Uh, of, of that party. And as we wrap up, uh, now that there are so many independent candidates and these independent candidates have the potential to mess up races for either party, do you see political parties actually using their dispute resolution mechanisms to go out and follow some of these independents just to ensure they contain the fallout? Uh, you know the debate about the independent parties uh, gain a lot of traction uh, and, and I say the thing is early days to actually know what will be the outcome. But one thing is certain in certain areas, like for instance where ODM or NASA is predominant, where Jubilee is predominant, uh, the fate of the independent parties is sealed. Unless you are part and parcel of the main political formations, you start absolutely no chance. Remember the people who voted out these gentlemen and ladies who are now aspiring to be independent candidates are the same voters they're mm -hmm. going to meet. And the narrative on the ground is, look, you don't support the president, yes. either Uhuru or Raira. So, the, the, the people they are competing with, they make sure that they actually edge them out. They ensure that these people basically are characterized as spoilers. So really, independent parties, they have my sympathies, but they are fighting a very, very, very big battle. And they have only themselves to blame. Uh, they have themselves to blame to a, to a great extent because this mentality that you cannot lose, mm -hmm. that you can only lose because you are rigged, that you don't lose because you're popular is a very strange narrative from our politicians. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bona Githaka, helping us understand uh, political parties and what they face. The biggest challenge, of course, is a fallout uh, that emanates from the recently concluded party primaries. We'll have to allow Bona Githaka to leave studio now because the next segment is about the trends. Brian Okoth and his team will be in